Making its arcade debut back in 1991, and seeing a home console release shortly after, it is Sunset Riders. Developed and published by Konami, it comes as little surprise. Churning out grade A thrillers such as this one was something that Konami, back in its heyday, did very well. So well, in fact, that you may have missed this one. Living in the shadows of other games such as Castlevania, the Metal Gear series, and its monster of a sibling, Contra, it's not hard to imagine that even quality games such as this one sometimes got overlooked. Well, you owe it to yourself to take a trip back to the early 90s and enjoy Sunset Riders. I'd like to clarify that for this review, I'm only looking into the Super Nintendo port of Sunset Riders. The Genesis version was... okay, but with entire stages missing, every end-level boss speech sample cut, and having only two playable characters, it's obvious that the Super NES release is superior. The original arcade version is best, but it's probably been 20 years or so since I've seen a stand-up. It's colorful, it's frantic, and with a choice of four bounty hunters, each with their own unique playstyles, it's replayable. The blue-clad, pistol-wielding cowboy, Billy, is my main man. Fast shooting, perfect line of fire. He's a good, no matter where you put him. Next, there's Bad Luck Steve, as I like to call him. He's no different than Billy, except in his ability to do anything right. And I'm being completely serious, I just cannot seem to get anything done with him. At least for me, I swear he's cursed. Up next, Cormano, a common favorite amongst players. The fuchsia pink sombrero and poncho wearing bandito fires a shotgun, and his shots are spread, which makes hitting your target easier. However, his shots travel slower, do less damage, and to top it off, he fires from the hip. Where other players' shots will reach normally, Cormano will need to maneuver to get the shot. Finally, we have Bob. It looks like he carries a Winchester rifle, but he too has a spread shot, so I'm probably wrong. The spread pattern is more concentrated than Cormano's, and it seems as though the shot travels faster as well. After using all of the characters extensively, I'm convinced that Bob is the most user-friendly, while Cormano remains the most challenging. No matter who you choose, make sure you go in guns a-blazing. There's no worry here about gunning down any civilians, it seems as though everyone you meet had their sights set on you first. So fire at anything and everything on your walk to the prize. And don't get too comfortable in that brisk walking pace either. You'll soon have to avoid stampedes, and occasionally you'll be thrown onto horseback. These horseback sections are tricky, and it's tough to get through them without dying at least once. You'll be forced to multitask. Avoid the logs being dropped in your path by the ass in the wagon, all while fending off the onslaught of outlaws trying to gun you down from their own horses. Do yourself a favor, and just shoot anyone that comes to the opening at the back of that wagon as quickly as possible. You'll avoid dodging too many logs, all while setting the whole thing aflame in a seizure-inducing display that's just... Well, it's just great. In between some of the levels, you'll be treated to a bonus game where the object is to shoot as many of the targets as possible. Although I'm not very good at these sections, they do a nice job of breaking up the gameplay and keeping things feeling fresh. But the real treat here are these end level bosses. <laughs> Good folks at Konami certainly didn't hold back on this one. These guys make up one of my favorite casts of video game bosses of all time. Their names are funny, as is their dialogue. The truth is, they are all very challenging. It's great fun creating strategies to defeat these guys. I never felt once like it couldn't be done, not against any of them. When you lose in this game, it seems to piss you off just enough to make you smile about it. Because you know you'll get it sooner or later. And then just like that, you're a pro. You've mastered every stage and memorized everything right down to the last bullet. 
All that's left to do now is confront Sir Richard Rose and claim the game for yourself. Well, the opening screen of his stage is a good indicator of things to come. Bullets from every angle. Honestly, the rest of the trip to Mr. Rose isn't all that bad. No more difficult than any other stage in the game. And then, there he is. Right out in the open. At least for a moment. You're ambushed. And believe me, your first few tries, you are going to die. I really thought Chief Wigwam was hard. And as a matter of fact, he was. Richard Rose isn't too bad once you get through his henchmen, but there are just so many. The crummy son of a bitch was wearing a vest. Well, that about wraps it up for Sunset Riders on the Super NES. As I said before, the Super Nintendo port is the better of the two, but don't stop yourself from playing the Sega Genesis version either. It really feels like an entirely different game. Thank you for watching this episode of the KO Game Room, and I'll see you all next time.